All right, Jordi Prepper here. Welcome to another Prepper News Network broadcast. Today is Friday the 19th of January 2024. Kazakhstan's going to send peacekeepers to Middle East and Africa, first of all. The proposal was submitted to the MPs for consideration by the President, and the MPs voted unanimously to send the peacekeepers. Kazakhstan will send up to 430 to participate in UN Observer Force for Disengagement in the Golan Heights. Obviously a UN-led initiative, they've either asked or coerced or pushed for them to send more troops. Kazakhstan's not new to the area. They've they've had military personnel in the interim the United Nations interim force in Lebanon. Uh, as part of a peacekeeping unit since 2018. So nothing new, but I think it would probably seem that they're being asked to send more. And this is something that we're seeing across a lot of countries. Basically, there's more and more troops from all nations congregating in this area right now. For obvious reasons, you know, there's a lot of conflict there right now. And at any point, there will be a massive flare-up of conflict. So it would seem that different, lots of different countries, they have different assets doing different things. Um, but they're definitely increasing the amount of manpower that they've got there. Next, um, on the Pakistan-Iran conflict, which has flared up really quickly. This conflict has, has rapidly escalated and it just seems to kind of came out of nowhere. The Iranians hit a specific target and they hit it dead center bullseye. So definitely one avenue which, you know, the really big conflict could start. The United States and China, they obviously know about the geopolitical ramifications from this conflict, but... They know that something big is going to happen in this region. You know, what's, what's going to start it? And, you know, there's so many different avenues for the conflict to start and really escalate, you know, beyond this tit for tat, you know, rockets firing across each other's borders and, you know, the small, small amount of military personnel that are starting to invade, uh, you know, people's territories. I mean, we're talking about the unfolding of a massive conflict, you know, a far, far bigger conflict, you know, what's, you know, what's actually going to start that? And, you know, do they, are they really, are they really that bothered about the two sides doing restraint? Because, I mean, it would, if Pakistan goes after Iran, it saves the United States doing it. But, you know, we don't know what sort of deals Iran's got with China and Russia, so, you know, they could be under their nuclear umbrella. There's an armed group in the Sine has declared that it's going to fight Israel. So, you know, the Houthis get all the media attention, but there's a lot of other groups which are pledging to, to fight Israel. And they're doing it in response to the ongoing war, war in Gaza. The statement published by Kitab al-Farouk, Notes the war in Gaza and the number of Palestinian casualties as the reason for the formation of the new organization. The speaker urges Arabs, Muslims and others to take up arms and fight Israel. So this is a new group, but I'm sure that there's a lot of other different groups, smaller groups, which you don't really hear about or of which have existed for quite a long time. Because... There's not just the usual suspects that are anti-Israel. There's a lot more of different factions and, and groups that just don't like what they do. So, But expect that more groups will form like this um, Kateb al-Farouk. I'm sure that we'll hear of other groups forming in the future with a similar motive. And speaking of the Houthis, they have struck the city of Elat, which is in Israel. Amidst tightened tensions in the region, Yemen's Houthi rebels targeted the Red Sea port city of Eilat, prompting Israel to activate area sirens and respond with defensive measures. Explosions were reported and the Israeli military confirmed the firing of an interceptor missile. So if we just look at the map here, we've got Yemen down here. And if we just zoom in, we can see a lot. It's like right on the top right of the Red Sea. 
And if we look at the distance that they fired this missile, I mean, people people think these Houthis are just firing like, you know, pretty low tech stuff, but the Houthis have a quite an extensive range. The distance here, it's like just over 2000 kilometers, which is not a short distance. And they've obviously got to fly over Saudi Arabia to hit the target. So they're obviously confident that it's gonna project the distance that it needs to and hit the target that they want it to hit. And it seems that it's probably almost bang on hit their, the target that they were after. So, you know, these Houthis, if you look at the 2000 kilometers, I mean, if you were to draw a circle with this, you know, that encloses a lot of area which they can hit. If they can hit this Red Sea port of Israel, they can obviously hit other targets that are deeper inside Israel. So staying in the Middle East, we've got the Iraqi Islamic resistance is starting to attack US troops in Erbil. Seems that they've attacked them there again, but they're continuing with the attacks. And uh, Pentagon Deputy Spokesperson Sabrina Singh said that the US forces stationed in Iraq and Syria have come under attack 140 times since October 17th. The attacks are persistent and alarming. 57 of the attacks have been in Iraq and 83 attacks have been in Syria. The resistance confirmed targeting three US occupation bases in Iraq and Syria using rockets and drones. So there's a lot of people using drones at the minute. This is like the new thing. Quite alarming really how quickly this has been taken up by people, but I think the Ukrainian conflict has really shown how effective drones are in warfare. And I think most conflicts around the world now, they're going to have some sort of drone involved in it. And speaking of drones, the Americans have lost a second Reaper drone since November 2023. It's each worth about $30 million plus, and it was shot down by the Islamic resistance of Iraq, which they're saying is an umbrella term used to describe all Iran backed forces in Iraq. So they're basically saying that this is a Iranian proxy group. Do you know, like these other groups which are forming or have been around for a long time, Gaza conflict has really ignited their, their willingness to get involved in, in operations against the Americans and the Israelis. So this is really giving them the excuse that they've probably been looking for for quite a long time. So whilst these conflicts around the world, these larger scale conflicts go on, it would seem that there's also people are jumping on the opportunity to, to do heinous things and they're hoping that what they're doing is going to slip under the radar. So this article is basically saying that the world's ignoring war, genocide and famine in Sudan. Gunmen went from home to home for three days in a refugee camp in Darfur, Sudan looking for Mazalit men and killing them. They've killed between 800 and 1300 members of the Black African ethnic group. So, you know, there's all of this conflict that's going around in the world and other people are taking advantage of all the focus and the attention whilst everything's laser focused on one thing. Whilst there's so much going on in the world, they're just hoping that they can do it without being noticed. So moving on to North Korea now, just for the last article, North Koreans are saying that they've assisted a new nuclear capable delivery system. The test involved the Hyal 5 23 system. It's a model of an unmanned nuclear capable underwater attack drone that North Korea has been developing in the East Sea. Analysts are remaining skeptical about the readiness of the underwater system for deployment, but North Korea is pushing ahead with it. And they said that they've obviously been very vocal about the test. They said that the underwater nuclear defense readiness condition has been further perfected. But it just goes to show, you know, you, you don't just have to worry about the drones over your head. Because, I mean, imagine exploding a nuclear bomb just off the coast of a country. You know, it's that obviously has implications. So, yeah, really concerning. These drones are basically becoming a effective 
de weapon delivery system on land and sea now. It's starting to become in the, in the ocean now. And I think we're really going to see the beginning of drones being used in terrorist acts. Because they've seen how they work so effectively in large-scale conflict. Imagine if you're a terrorist and you're, for whatever reason that you want to conduct an attack in the country that you're in, you could just basically get a drone, outfit it with a grenade, you know, and just fly it over and just start dropping the grenades on people. And that would be an extremely effective delivery system that would cause loss of life, potentially, or destruction on a, a different scale. So it could be very small or it could be very large, depending on the size of the drone, really. But, you know, the, it would be an extremely effective delivery system and it would also be really quite anonymous unless you actually want to own up to the attack because lots of different countries are making these drones now and they're selling them to these other countries. So who do you blame? Do you blame the country that made the drone or do you blame the country or the individual that's that's used the delivery system? You know, it's it's a really concerning thing and obviously what do we do? Do we start having anti-drone systems in every major city in the world now i mean it's just absolutely crazy what's going on and these new systems are being used in conflict all right that's today's prepper news broadcast thank you very much for tuning in be safe be prepared and i'll see you in the next broadcast it's jordy prepper out